Anne Hecha was a gifted actress who enthralled audiences with her performances on film and stage. Anne's career was marked by outstanding accomplishments, ranging from her early days in indie films to her notable television performances. But Anne's life was marred by personal hardships, such as her battle with mental health concerns and the effects of childhood trauma. Unfortunately, Anne's life was cut short in a horrific vehicle accident that shook the globe. In this video, we'll look at the events that led to her untimely death, including the accident and its aftermath, early life and struggles. Anne Celeste Hecha, who was born on May 25, 1969, in Aurora, Ohio, grew up in an unstable and turbulent atmosphere. As the youngest of five children born to Donald Don Joe Hetchy and Nancy Hetchy, her childhood was defined by frequent relocations. The Hetcha family moved around Ohio, including the suburbs of Cleveland and Akron, as Don sought numerous careers, frequently fueled by get-rich-quick schemes. Raised in a profoundly religious setting, Anne's upbringing was similar to being raised in a cult as she subsequently recounted. Her parents were devout fundamentalist Christians who instilled rigid ideals and beliefs in their children. Despite the religious intensity, the Hecke household was beset by instability, owing primarily to Don's irregular lifestyle and financial enterprises. Despite his instability, Don exhibited musical talent, which led him to work as a choir director in many churches, demonstrating a duality inside him. The family's financial situation caused them to live a nomadic lifestyle, moving frequently during Anne's childhood. One such journey brought them to the Atlantic City, New Jersey area in 1977, where they sought safety in Ventnor City and later Ocean City. Anne felt the weight of financial distress even as a child, working at a boardwalk hamburger stand to supplement the family's income and demonstrating her tenacity in the face of adversity. Their financial problems worsened, resulting in the foreclosure of Don's home and subsequent eviction from a rented property. Struggling to make ends meet, the family took comfort in the generosity of church acquaintances who granted them housing out of charity. Faced with the hard truth of their situation, Anne's mother divorced Don and took control, rallying her children to help the family. Tragedy struck the Hecka family with relentless harshness when Don's health gradually deteriorated, hidden behind a cloak of secrecy. Don, a closeted gay man in New York City, kept his late-stage AIDS diagnosis from his family, prolonging their pain. His death in 1983, a scant month after the family learnt of his sickness, placed a pall over Anne's youth, forcing her to deal with the consequences of his concealed truth. The sorrow of loss was exacerbated three months later, when Anne's brother Nathan died in a devastating vehicle accident, shattering the family's fragile sense of stability. The remaining members of the Hecha family traveled to Chicago in search of comfort and support among extended family members. They traversed the uncharted waters of loss together, relying on one another for solace in the middle of the storm. Despite the traumas that marked her early years, Anne's irrepressible spirit endured. Immersed in the thriving theatrical culture at the Francis W. Parker School, she found refuge on stage, perfecting her skill and nurturing her love of acting. A beacon of resilience, Anne's persistence and talent drew the notice of a talent scout, opening doors to a world beyond her difficult past. Anne began a new chapter in 1987 when she accepted a position in the soap opera Another World, which marked her television debut. Relocating to New York City, she welcomed the opportunity for independence, ready to make her own career in the volatile world of show business. Anne's journey from the constraints of a one-bedroom apartment to the glitz and glamour of Hollywood Hollywood exemplifies the triumph of the human spirit over hardship, owing to her undying tenacity and unwavering desire to defy the odds. The beginning of her career in television and film, Anne Celeste Hecha embarked on a riveting career in television and film, demonstrating her talent and versatility in a variety of roles that left an indelible impression on viewers around the world. From her early days on the soap opera, Another World, to her move to the big screen, Hecha's career path exemplifies her unwavering dedication and natural skill. During her time on Another World, Hecha captivated audiences with her portrayal of Vicki Hudson and Marley Love. Her ability to play two different personas gained her critical acclaim and multiple awards, including a prestigious Daytime Emmy in 1991. Hecha's success in the soap opera propelled her to the forefront, establishing the groundwork for a successful career in the entertainment world. Despite the uncertainty surrounding her future after leaving Another World, Hecha's enthusiasm for acting remained constant. Rejecting the traditional path of soap operas, she pursued other opportunities, including a career in design, before returning to her true calling. A supporting role in the television film production of Willa Cather's O. 
pioneers gave Hecha a new sense of purpose, propelling her to greater prominence in the world of acting. Hecha's move to the big screen was highlighted by a string of riveting performances that demonstrated her ability and range as an actress. From her primetime debut on Murphy Brown to her captivating appearances in Los Angeles theater shows, Hecha enthralled audiences with her natural talent and magnetic personality. In 1993, Hecha made her theatrical film debut in the independent film An Ambush of Ghosts, which laid the framework for her future cinematic ambitions. Subsequent appearances in films such as The Adventures of Huck Finn and A Simple Twist of Fate cemented her status as a rising star in Hollywood, earning accolades from both reviewers and audiences. Hecha's breakthrough came in 1995 with her major role in Donald Camel's Wild Side, in which she gave a brave performance alongside renowned performers Christopher Walken and Joan Chen. The picture, known for its controversial depiction of a lesbian relationship, demonstrated Hecha's determination to push boundaries and explore complex characters. Hecha continued to challenge herself, delivering fascinating performances in productions such as HBO's If These Walls Could Talk and the indie film Walking and Talking. Her nuanced performances and ability to play a variety of roles gained her worldwide acclaim, with reviewers hailing her as a rising star. Hecha's rise from soap opera star to silver film success demonstrates her perseverance, determination, and uncompromising dedication to her profession. With each job, she captivates audiences and makes an unmistakable impression on the entertainment industry, cementing her reputation as a strong artist in Hollywood and elsewhere. The Career Breakthrough in 1997, Anne Celeste Hecha had a watershed moment in her acting career that would impact her future in Hollywood. Hecha's performance as the wife of the main character, an FBI undercover agent played by Johnny Depp, in the hit crime drama Donnie Brasco, garnered her global attention and accolades. Critics, including Janet Maslin of the New York Times, praised Hecha's performance, pointing out her ability to elevate what could have been a thankless job into something memorable and meaningful. Following her triumph in Donnie Brasco, Hecha rose through the ranks of the entertainment industry, cementing her prominence with supporting roles in many high-profile films released in 1997. In Volcano, a disaster picture about the development of a volcano in Los Angeles, Hecha showed off her flexibility alongside Tommy Lee Jones and Gabby Hoffman. Despite mixed critical reception, the film's commercial success highlighted Hecha's ability to captivate viewers and contribute to box office successes. In the slasher thriller I Know What You Did Last Summer, Hecha portrayed a rural recluse, bringing depth and mystery to the ensemble cast. Despite her limited screen time, Hetch's performance shone out, winning acclaim from Variety writer Derek Eller, who hailed her as the film's star. Hetch's ability to adapt minor roles into memorable characters was further demonstrated in Wag the Dog, a political satire in which she played a presidential advisor. Originally created for a male character, Hetch's interpretation provided a new perspective on the role, earning her several honors, including the National Board of Review Award for Best Supporting Actress in 1997. The film's success at the box office demonstrated Hecha's expanding power and appeal in the business. In her first main part in a big film, Hecha played opposite Harrison Ford in the romantic adventure Six Days, Seven Nights. Despite the film's mixed reviews, Hecha's portrayal of a New York City journalist stuck on a barren island demonstrated her ability and range as an actor. However, her personal life, notably her same-sex relationship, came under public scrutiny, affecting her career and making it difficult to land prominent roles. Despite her hurdles, Hecha continues to push the boundaries of her career, starring in the drama Return to Paradise and the remake of Alfred Hitchcock's classic Psycho. Despite mixed reviews for both films, Hecha's performances were praised for their depth and complexity, cementing her reputation as a versatile actress capable of playing a wide range of roles. Hecha's contributions to cinema went beyond main roles, as evidenced by her partnership with Ed Harris in The Third Miracle. The film, directed by Agnieszka Holland, highlighted Hecha's ability to give engaging performances in a range of genres, cementing her reputation as a versatile and accomplished actress in Hollywood. Despite the difficulties she encountered, Hecha's passion for her art and ability to exceed expectations secured her reputation as a strong figure in the entertainment business, her creative abilities behind the camera, the directing projects. During the late 1990s and early 2000s, Anne Celeste Hecha dabbled in film directing, demonstrating her creative abilities behind the camera. She took a break from acting and focused her efforts on creating fascinating tales and bringing them to life in cinema. Hecha's directing debut came in 1998 with the short film Stripping for Jesus, which she both directed and authored. This film looked at the unusual subject of an evangelical Christian stripper who included Bible verses in her performance, using them as a metaphor for Hecha's 
Mecha's own life experiences. Despite being a small-scale production, Stripping for Jesus gave Hecha the opportunity to expand her artistic muscles and explore subjects that were personal to her. Following her debut, Hecha began directing cable television productions, frequently teaming with her then-partner Ellen DeGeneres. In 2000, she directed a section for HBO's If These Walls Could Talk Too, which explored many elements of lesbian existence. Hecha's piece, titled 2000, starred DeGeneres and Sharon Stone as a modern-day lesbian couple negotiating the difficulties of raising a family via artificial insemination. Hecha directed another segment for Showtime's On the Edge in 2001, continuing her study of anthology forms. The episode, titled Reaching Normal, was based on Hecha's screenplay adaptation of a short tale and starred Andy McDowell and Paul Rudd. DeGeneres made another guest appearance, emphasizing the two's creative connection. In addition to her narrative endeavors, Hecha worked on a documentary titled Ellen DeGeneres, American Summer, which followed DeGeneres' stand-up comedy tour. Although the documentary was never completed, it demonstrated Hecha's versatility as a filmmaker and willingness to experiment with many genres and storytelling techniques. Hecha's venture into directing showcased her love of storytelling and ability to bring captivating stories to life on screen, venturing into independent films, TV series, and Broadway roles. In the early 2000s, Anne Celeste Hecha went on a diversified path via independent films, television series, and Broadway, exhibiting her multifaceted talents as an actress and director. During this time, she dug into interesting stories, took on demanding roles, and left an unforgettable impression on the entertainment business. Hecha's performance of Dr. Sterling in the 2001 film adaptation of Elizabeth Wurzel's memoirs, Prozac Nation, was one of her significant roles during this time. Hecha, who co-starred with Christina Ricci and Jessica Lang gave her role depth and sincerity, which contributed to the film's portrayal of sadness and mental health issues. Despite its limited theatrical release, Prozac Nation received critical acclaim, establishing Hecha as a diverse and accomplished actress. The same year, Hecha demonstrated her versatility by starring in the thriller John Q with Denzel Washington. In the film, Hecha played a hospital administrator caught up in a high-stakes medical crisis, showcasing her ability to inhabit complicated characters and captivate audiences with her riveting performances. Despite earning negative reviews from critics, John Q was a commercial success, bolstering Hecha's status in Hollywood. In addition to her cinematic work, Hecha had a remarkable excursion into television with a recurring role in the fourth season of the acclaimed show Ally McBeal. Her portrayal of an engaging character enriched the show's ensemble cast and earned her praise for her talents on the small screen. Hecha's talents extended beyond acting as she made her Broadway debut in 2002 in the Pulitzer Prize-winning play Proof. Hecha grabbed audiences with her nuanced performance as a young woman dealing with her father's mathematical talent and mental instability, evoking comparisons to renowned actresses who had previously played the part. Her performance received critical acclaim, demonstrating her capacity to shine in a variety of theatrical works. In 2004, Hecha gained critical acclaim and plaudits for her performances in both film and television, marking a watershed moment in her career. Hecha was nominated for a Primetime Emmy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her work in the Lifetime film Gracie's Choice, where she demonstrated her versatility and emotional depth in a moving performance. Furthermore, her performance in the CBS television film The Dead Will Tell earned her a Saturn Award nomination for Best Actor, cementing her reputation as a diverse and brilliant actor. Hecha's contributions to independent cinema continued with her performance in the well-received drama Birth, starring Nicole Kidman and Cameron Bright. Her captivating performance enriched the film's examination of complicated ideas and relationships, establishing her as a respected actor in the business. In television, Hecha played recurrent roles in shows like Everwood and Nip Tuck, demonstrating her versatility and ability as an actress. She also appeared in her own series, Men in Trees, playing a New York author dealing with the complications of love and life in a small Alaskan community. Despite the show's demise, Hecha's portrayal received high appreciation from both audiences and critics for her compelling performance. Throughout her career in the early 2000s, Anne Celeste Hecha's dedication to her art and ability to inhabit numerous roles across various genres cemented her reputation as a talented and versatile Hollywood actor. Whether on the big screen, the little screen, or the Broadway stage, Hecha's performances enthralled viewers and left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. The late years of her acting career, 
Anne Celeste Hecha's later acting career demonstrated her versatility and talent in a wide range of genres, including film, television, and Broadway. In 2010, she appeared as the CEO of a major corporation in the comedy The Other Guys, alongside Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg. Her small but noteworthy role injected humorous flair into the film and demonstrated her ability to dominate the screen. The next year, Hecha starred in the independent comedy Cedar Rapids, playing a flirtatious insurance agent opposite Ed Helms. Her performance enthralled both crowds and critics, who praised her ability to mix humor with depth. The film debuted at Sundance and gained critical acclaim, cementing Hecha's reputation as a dynamic actress in the independent film scene. In the drama Rampart, Hecha co-starred with Woody Harrelson and Cynthia Nixon as one of a corrupt police officer's past wives. Lives. Her interpretation lent substance to the film's ensemble cast and earned her plaudits for her nuanced performance. Despite its limited theatrical release, Rampart got favorable reviews, demonstrating Hecha's ability to succeed in tragic parts. Hecha proceeded to demonstrate her versatility through appearances in television films and series. She gave a captivating performance in the Lifetime film Girl Fight with Jodell Furland and James Tupper. Furthermore, her performance as the main singer in the Broadway musical Opening Night highlighted her versatility as a performer, demonstrating her abilities beyond the screen. Throughout her career, Hecke explored complicated characters and tales, making an indelible mark on both viewers and critics. Her commitment to her profession and desire to take on new parts distinguish her as a respected and versatile actor in the entertainment business. Hecke's latter acting career, spanning comedy, drama, film, and television, demonstrated her talent and range, solidifying her status as a beloved and admired actress. Hecha's talents went beyond film and television to include audiobooks and radio. She narrated multiple audiobooks, including her own biography, Call Me Crazy, demonstrating her storytelling abilities across audio mediums. Her Sirius XM radio show, Love and Hecha, also served as a forum for fascinating debates and interviews, demonstrating her flexibility beyond acting. Anne Celeste Hecha's subsequent acting career was distinguished by her adaptability, talent, and desire to try new parts and mediums. From riveting performances on screen to inventive ventures behind the scenes, she made an indelible impression on the entertainment business and will be remembered for her contributions to film, television, and beyond. The Troublesome Family Anne Hecha's family history is characterized by sorrow and estrangement, which has influenced her own journey and relationships throughout her life. Her mother, Nancy Hecha, a Christian therapist since 1997, is essential to her family dynamics. Nancy's concentration on overcoming homosexuality since 2005 has led her to appear at events hosted by evangelical Christian and Christian rights organizations, including the ex-gay ministry Love One Out. Hecha's youth was characterized by loss as she grew up with four older siblings three of whom died before her. Her elder sister, Susan Bergman, died of a brain tumor, leaving behind a memoir called Anonymity that detailed their family's troubles. Another sister, Cynthia, died as an infant from a heart condition, and her only brother, Nathan, perished in a traffic accident when he was only 18 years old. Anne has claimed Nathan's death was a suicide, although her mother and surviving siblings reject this. Abigail, Hetcha's fourth sibling, is the sole surviving member other than Anne. Anne Hetcha's connection with her family members deteriorated over time, aggravated by her revelations about her friendship with Ellen DeGeneres and allegations of sexual assault by her father. Hecha's mother adamantly denies the charges, causing more divisions among the family. In her biography, Hecha courageously described the alleged abuse she suffered at the hands of her father, claiming that it began when she was a baby and continued until she was 12. She described times in which her mother rejected her genital herpes symptoms as a simple diaper rash, demonstrating the extent of denial and dysfunction in their household. Despite their turbulent family past, Hecha attempted to reconcile with her remaining sister Abigail in 2011. However, she voiced uncertainty about the likelihood of healing her relationship with her mother, citing Nancy's continual denial of the abuse accusations and her ongoing efforts to convert gay people into heterosexuals as sources of friction. Despite the turbulent familial dynamics, Hecha found consolation and delight in her friendship with her nephew and niece, Elliot and Natalie Bergman, members of the band Wild Bell. She exhibited great delight in their musical accomplishments and referred to herself as a proud aunt. Anne Hecha's family history is complicated, characterized by tremendous sadness, estrangement, and continual efforts at reconciliation. Despite the difficulties she has experienced, Hecha has managed her personal connections with tenacity and honesty, seeking peace and understanding amid the volatility of her family's past. The complicated web of relationships, 
Anne Hetch's life and career have been defined by a number of partnerships that have captured the public's attention and shaped her professional path. From her early romance with Lindsay Buckingham to her stormy relationship with Ellen DeGeneres and subsequent marriages and partnerships, Hetch's love relationships have frequently intertwined with her work in unexpected ways. In the early 1990s, Hetcha became romantically linked with Lindsay Buckingham, a member of the legendary band Fleetwood Mac. Their romance, however brief, allowed insight into Hetcha's personal life away from the spotlight. However, her relationship with comedian and actor Steve Martin in the mid-1990s drew a lot of media attention. The two met on the set of A Simple Twist of Fate and began a romance that lasted about two years. Their collaboration demonstrated Hetch's ability to network within the entertainment industry and negotiate the difficulties of high-profile relationships. However, Hetch's relationship with Ellen DeGeneres propelled her into the public glare as one half of what was labeled the world's first gay super couple. Their romance, which began in 1997, was remarkable for its visibility and openness in an era when LGBTQ plus representation in the media was restricted. Hecha and DeGeneres demonstrated their commitment to one another by discussing the prospect of a civil union. However, their love story took a turn when they split up in August 2000. The breakup was met with great media scrutiny, with Hecha handling the consequences of their split while facing career and personal obstacles. She faced charges of professional ramifications as a result of her connection with DeGeneres, including being told not to attend premieres together and having difficulty finding acting work. Despite the hurdles, Hecha persevered and fell in love again with Coleman Coley Lafoon, a cinematographer she met while shooting a television documentary. They married in 2001 and had a son, Homer Heka Lafoon. However, their marriage ended in divorce in 2009, with Lafoon blaming Hecha's actions for their split. Following her divorce, Hecha began a relationship with Jay James Tupper, her co-star in the television series Men in Trees. Though they never married, they referred to themselves as eternally engaged and had a son, Atlas Hecka Tupper, in 2009. Despite their relationship, Hecka and Tupper split up in 2018, marking another chapter in Hecha's romantic journey. Hecha recently reconnected with her former Hung co-star Thomas Jane in 2019. However, their romance was brief and they had split by the time Hecha died. Anne Hecha has lived through the highs and lows of love and relationships, with each connection influencing her personal and professional development. A Toll on Mental Health Anne Hetch's memoir, Call Me Crazy, dives into her deep difficulties with mental health concerns and the long-term effects of childhood abuse. She admits that much of her early years were spent in darkness, with memories blacked out as a coping strategy. Seeking comfort and healing, Hetcha sought therapy while working on the soap opera Another World and continued to receive various sorts of therapeutic interventions during the mid-1990s. Reikian body psychotherapy was a significant therapeutic strategy for Hetcha, allowing her to recover repressed memories of the claimed assault and confront the emotional impact of her horrific past. She says this technique helped her recover by allowing her to access deeply suppressed memories and emotions. Hecha also went to guided LSD therapy to further open blocked memories, eventually leading to what she claims as a complete remembrance of her early experiences. However, Hecha's life changed dramatically after filming for Donnie Brasco. She experienced a condition of crisis characterized by auditory hallucinations and the belief that she was hearing God's voice. In this changed state, Hecha became convinced that she was the incarnation of an inner entity named Celestia, whom she saw as the second coming of Jesus. She felt a divine calling to enlighten humanity and regarded her celebrity as a way to accomplish this goal. This phase of spiritual revelation lasted 12 days, and Hecha experienced a variety of unusual events, including glossolalia, automatic writing, clairvoyance, and even stigmata on her feet. Her alter persona, Celestia, lasted four years, during which time she claimed to have psychic healing powers and other extraordinary encounters. Later, Hecha began on a bizarre journey to Cantua Creek, California, which marked the pinnacle of her spiritual development. In a condition of confusion and disorientation, Hecha abandoned her vehicle and walked miles in the blistering sun before finding sanctuary at a ranch house. Her strange behavior, which included asking for a shower and professing delusional ideas, caused the homeowner to call the authorities. Hecha's subsequent admittance to a psychiatric institution and diagnosis of psychotic break was a watershed moment in her life. She admitted the severity of her mental health issues, attributing them to the trauma of childhood abuse. Hecha discussed her rehabilitation experience in a series of television interviews, emphasizing her determination to leave behind her alter ego and illusions, restore her sanity, and embrace a newfound sense of stability and self-awareness. The Tragic Car Crash
On August 5, 2022, Anne Hetcha was involved in a sequence of car accidents in Los Angeles that resulted in a tragic outcome. The first mishap occurred when her vehicle collided with an apartment garage, causing minor damage. Despite being encouraged to get out of the car by an unidentified man, Hetcha's vehicle reversed and fled the scene. Shortly later, her car crashed into a Jaguar without stopping, nearly missing a pedestrian. The most catastrophic event occurred when Hetcha's truck collided with a house, penetrating the wall and burying itself 30 feet into the structure. The impact ignited the vehicle, resulting in a swiftly spreading fire that devoured the entire structure. It took firefighters 65 minutes to completely extinguish the fire, leaving the property physically ruined and uninhabitable. Hecha was stuck inside the flaming truck for 45 minutes before firemen rescued her. By the time she was released, she had suffered significant burns and smoke inhalation injuries. The tenant of the house, who was in the back of the building at the time of the crash, sustained minor injuries, but lost all of her personal possessions in the fire. Law enforcement officials stated that Hecha was acting abnormally and looked to be under the influence at the time of the crashes. A preliminary blood test revealed the presence of cocaine and drugs in her system, including fentanyl. However, more testing was needed to ascertain whether the opioids discovered were supplied by the hospital or taken prior to the accidents. The sequence of events highlights the dangers of driving while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Hecha's actions not only risked her life but also caused major property damage and put others in danger. The incident serves as a stark reminder of the significance of safe driving and the potentially disastrous repercussions of impaired driving, being hospitalized and eventually departing the world. As Anne Hecka was being transported away from the crash site, she was spotted sitting up on a stretcher, battling with firefighters before passing out. She was transported to Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center for emergency care before being moved to the Grossman Burn Center at West Hills Hospital for specialist treatment owing to burn injuries acquired in the event. Her condition deteriorated, and on August 8, a spokesman revealed that she was in critical condition in a coma, requiring mechanical ventilation for lung injuries. Despite earlier reports of stability, her her condition remained severe. By August 11, it was found that Hecha had sustained an anoxic brain injury and was unlikely to survive. However, in accordance with her desire to be an organ donor, she was maintained on life support to determine organ viability. A few days later, organ recipients were identified, and Hecha's body was donated. An honor walk was held by hospital workers in recognition of her generosity. Later that evening, she was taken off life support and proclaimed legally dead, the cause of death being inhalation and thermal injuries acquired in the accident. The autopsy results for Hecha were disclosed, confirming that she was not under the influence of illicit substances at the time of the incident. While inactive cocaine metabolites were discovered, indicating previous use, no active narcotics were detected in her system. Similarly, cannabinoids were detected in her urine, but not in her blood, indicating past usage unrelated to the incident. The presence of fentanyl was linked to hospital care. On May 14, 2023, Hecha's cremated remains were deposited in a mausoleum Liam at Hollywood Forever Cemetery, where she will be laid to rest forever. Thanks for watching the video. Stay tuned for more exciting ones in the future.